What's up YouTube? It's a Cinec Tech Ninja back at again with another video. Today we'll be doing the full review on a Sony s rs XP500 and 700 comparing it to the Jayla Boombox 2 and XG500. So without further ado, let's get on to the video. Moving on to the specs, starting off with the XP700. Sony IR test is up to 25 hours of listen time, but when the volume is 17, 35 to 45%, which is pretty loud, I'm able to get nine hours, eight minutes with the lights and mega base turned on, but when the volume is set to max, I'm only able to get six hours, eight minutes with a recharge time of two hours, 25 minutes for all Sony speakers. They also share Bluetooth 5.0. I'm able to get 94 feet in range for the XP700, 83 feet for the XP500, and 105 feet for the XG500. And they also share AAC, SEC, and Sony's own LDAC audio codecs. So lip sync is not an issue. When it comes to the speaker setup, the XP700 has three 2.36 inch tweeters, two 6.69 inch woofers, one 1.96 inch tweeter in the back with one real fine bass port with a total output of 110 watts whenever the speaker is plugged in. Sadly, I do not know the power rating on the XP speakers on battery mode. The XP700 switches tweeters depending on what orientation it's in. So when it's standing up, it's using the top two tweeters to play in stereo and the back to play in mono. But when we lay the speaker down, the back and bottom right tweeters shut off and the left one activates to create a proper stereo signature, but you are gonna miss out on some clarity from the rear tweeter. Sony advertises up to 20 hours of battery life for the XP500, but when volume is 17, 45 to 55%, I'm able to get six hours, 58 minutes with the lights and mega base turned on, but when the volume is set to max, which isn't loud at all, what did you say? I'm only able to get five hours, eight minutes. The XP500 has two 5.51 inch woofers, two 1.96 inch tweeters with one rear fine bass port with a total output of 77 watts when a speaker is plugged in, which makes a huge difference in audio performance. <laughs> oh yeah! Boombox 2 and XG500 has the exact same speaker layout to tweeters, woofers, and pass raters. The Boombox 2 is rated 120 watts on battery, 160 watts when it's plugged in, and the XG500 is rated 60 watts on battery, 70 watts when it's plugged in. The Boombox 2 can get four hours, 25 minutes when the volume is set to max, and six hours, 30 minutes when the volume is set between 50 to 60 percent and get over 120 feet in bluetooth range while the xg500 can get 10 hours eight minutes when the volume is set to max with the lights turned on and mega bass mostly turned off but when mega bass is mostly turned on you're looking more around seven hours 30 minutes but i still have to certify this with a real test moving on to the features all of these speakers are meant for medium to small parties but what form factor and size preference do you prefer I'll start with the XP700 since it shares most of the same features with its small siblings. The XP700 is meant for medium to small outdoor parties, being able to come to size 5, 15 people with balanced sound. The XP500 and 700 is rated IPX4, splash resistant, with RGB lights in the top and bottom handles that splash back onto the body into your surroundings, creating a subtle but flashy light show that syncs onto your music pretty well depending on what line of mode you have it in. The XG500, not so much because it only has one RGB per pass rater, but when the lighting mode is set to delightful, you can see rolling shutter with your own eyes, which is pretty cool to see in person. As far as ports, the Sony speakers have two USB-A out ports with a wattage of five volts, two amps, which is pretty slow, but the left one supports a thumb drive for media playback with two quarter inch microphone inputs and one quarter inch guitar input with gain control but the XG500 only has one of each input. And all of the speakers have 3.5 millimeter auxiliary inputs for wire listening. When it comes to the pairing protocol, Sony is using Sony Party Connect. You're able to pair up to 100 Sony Party Connect speakers together or two of the same units in stereo. But this method isn't really fluid because the speaker automatically disconnects from your device and you have to wait 20 seconds for it to reconnect or use the app. They don't always pair up with each other and you do lose out on some deep bass. The Boombox 2 is using JLo Party Boost. So you have to pair up to 100 JLo Party Boost speakers together in sync or two of the same units in stereo, but this method works so much better than Sony Party Connect because you only need to press one button and they're all paired. That's it. The only time you need to use the app is to switch between party and stereo modes. The Boombox 2 is also rated IPX7, water resistant down to 3.5 feet for 30 minutes. It's time for a sound test, but before you go, let me inform you what's going on. The first test will be volume match between 40 and 65% to represent average listening volumes, then 100% to get the best potential on battery mode. After that, we take the speakers outside to perform a part of scenario, which means AC mode at 100%. 
but I will also include Sony Party Connect, which means the XP700, 500, and XP500 will be playing alongside other speakers in DC mode to represent about the huge volume gap. All right! The Sony speakers will be using Clear Audio Plus and Mega Bass the entire time. So without further ado, pet on your headphones for the best sound experience. But when it comes to the outdoor sound test, turn it down some because I don't want you to hurt your ears. So without further ado, let's get on to the sound test.
We are back from the biggest sound test I have ever had on my channel so far. Hopefully y'all enjoy that. The XP700 is the loudest speaker here with the overall best sound stage. High range frequencies are crisp and clear with only a little bit of distortion when the volume is maxed out with heavy bass music. But when the speaker is standing upright outdoors, the third tutor really helps out a lot, especially from behind. From the front, it's only a minor increase in sound quality, but from behind, many range frequencies are still missing, but high range frequencies along with the rear firing bass port makes the speaker sound much better than these other speakers. But I will lay the speaker down indoors because it can get a bit harsh if you have a sensitive ear. Mid range frequencies are good like all Sony speakers, but the XP700 isn't overly boosted. All rappers, instruments, and singers sound great across the board. The deep bass is a disappointment, especially for the speaker size. The upper bass is kept in check indoors and outdoors, but the deep bass dines up at 31 hertz with good bass starting at 38 hertz. Overall, bass performance is balanced. There really isn't nothing special about it. The XP500 is the most quietest speaker here, besides having the most distortion and closing soundstage compared to the other speakers. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't sound bad at all. It just doesn't play as clean compared to the other speakers. But it's surprising it has the deepest bass. <laughs> Playing down to 31 hertz with good bass starting at 35 hertz. The XP500 has a neutral sound stage, but it is very quiet until you plug it in to receive a five decibel boost, which is huge. Then it performs like it should, and the bass just becomes much more prominent compared to the other speakers. The XG500 sounds great at lower volumes, but the XP speakers simply sound good at lower volumes as well. So it only outclass the JLo Boom Mix 2 until 65%. Afterwards, most of the deep bass rolls off, and you're only left with mid and upper bass with prominent mids and shallow highs. The JLo Boombox 2 high range frequencies is more apparent than Sony's sound signature, which means it can sound kind of harsh when the volume is set to 80% or above indoors. Mid range frequencies are mostly flat across the board, but there is a dip at 2.7 kilohertz, which makes it sound kind of dull. It is not bad, but it can simply sound better. Deep bass from 41 hertz to 49 hertz has the Sony speakers beat except for the XP500 when it is in AC mode, which means the Boombox 2 has a very good deep punch to it, but it can get overblown when the volume is set to 70% because it likes to bottom out. You won't hear any distortion, just the Boombox 2 trying too hard to keep the deep bass. All of the speakers are meant for medium to small parties, but the form factor and size difference will play a big role in your Purchase decision. The JVL Boombox 2 retailing for $500 is pretty overpriced with no features and average better life besides JVL Party Boost and Alfi X7 water resistance. You're only left with a solid speaker that gets pretty loud and has a lot of bass for its size. But the Boombox 3 is kind of within two months for the exact same price tag. So I'll wait on that and see how the speaker turns out. The XG500 retailing for $398 comes with a lot of features, but it simply pales in sound quality at higher volumes. You need an Android device to use Parent EQ to get more sound performance and a OnePlus device to use Dolby Atmos EQ to keep the deep bass at all volumes. It doesn't sound bad, but if you can get a speaker like how I did for $180 on Amazon refurbished, then I say that is a absolute steal. The XP500 is very quiet for its size, not to mention the XP speakers also feature Sony's battery management. This is the worst. <laughs> Which means the maximum volume limit will gradually lower until the maximum volume limit hits 60%. You can get back some volume when the XP500 reaches 70%. If you turn down around 65%, you will actually gain volume. And when the XP700 reaches 40%, you can also gain some volume when you hit it towards 65%, give or take. For $398, I will take this speaker over the other ones. So if you're going to be in the house or near an outlet a lot, I will get the XP500. The XP700 is just heavy as hell. 
The sound performance is good, but it doesn't match the speaker's size, including that battery management problem. So for $450, I would pass, but for $350, I say this is a pretty good deal. This has been the Cinetech Ninja. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.